shall team I to nigh. Otta of a cash. She tea, they wait at a nigh. Call you future disciple said, I wish to serve God in your monastery through the discipline of the rule read to me. The Abba replied, And this is your pleasure? And the future disciple said, First it is God's, so then also mine. The world, it offers many things, material gain, personal freedom, comfort, pleasure. But does the world deliver these wants? Are these desires fulfilled? Perhaps for a time, but like all created things, change occurs. We suffer. We may even lose faith in our pursuits of these things. And then we die. What does it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? God calls us to abandon even the good things of this world and to follow him alone. Thus we have been called to the shores of Lake Superior to build a monastery in this beautiful but marginal and difficult place. For much of the year it is fierce and nearly deserted. The severity of its winters walls us in solitude. The great lake in its many and changing moods has been a never-ending source of wonder and consolation. All around, we see evidence of the divine. Here we have put down roots and drawn sustenance. Above all, this good land has provided peace and manifold blessings of spirit.
prayer is the essence of monastic life. It is the purpose of the monk's withdrawal from the world and his motivation for living together with other like-minded souls. Away from the world's many distractions, he is free to devote himself to contemplation, conversation with God deep within the recesses of his heart. At fixed hours, he also stands to pray in common with his brothers. In our monastery, the common prayer is almost entirely sung. The monastic choir is the bond of our life. Blessed is our God at all times, both now and forever. Amen. Glory be to you, our God. Glory be to you. O heavenly King, Comforter, Spirit of Truth, who are everywhere present and filling all things, treasury of all blessings and giver of Let us be attentive. Peace be with all. Wisdom, let us be attentive. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness. For his name's sake, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me, your rod and your staff comfort me. You prepare a table before me, in the presence of my enemies, you anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord 
forever and ever. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, both now and forever and unto ages of ages. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Glory be to you. nice because it's very sensitive for uh, for uh, turning the heat down. There we go. First, we uh, have learned to take recipes that call for heavy cream and use coconut milk instead. Flavor isn't quite the same. It gives it more of a, a Polynesian or, <laughs> or or South Asian, Southeast Asian flavor. It works mm -hmm. okay. Works okay.
good salads take a while. This is there? Yeah, so we need to put that end on the table. Father Nicholas or something. Well, maybe I can do it myself. Do it myself. satisfied. May they who seek the Lord praise him, and may their hearts live forever. O Christ our God, bless the food and drink of your servants, for you are holy, both now and forever. Amen. In, In the, the name, name of the, the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord to Abba Yosef, Kai Lego Auto, Abba, Kata Denemin Mu, Poitain Mikran Mu Snaxin, Kai Ten Mikran Nestian Mu, Kai Ten Eken, Kai Ten Melitain, Kai Ten Ezekian, Kai Tau Kata Denemin Mu, Katheria Tos Logismois, Te Aun Eko. Poise Lepon Anast and Hegeron 
aiplosetos keros eston uranon, kegonesin oi dactyloi oto, usdeka lapres pyros. Kai lege auto. E deles, geno holos, os per. We came with few illusions. We knew the life would be difficult, and we had no great confidence in our own abilities to cope with hardship. We knew we were following in the footsteps of giants. We had no thought of rivaling the heroic asceticism of the Desert Fathers, or the organizational genius of Saint Benedict. We took them as guides, and trusted that the Lord would provide us the strength to carry out His will. We applied ourselves to the tasks as He set them before us. I think what I have found most about monasticism, or not so much monasticism, but my, my relationship with Christ as I, I've grown in monasticism, one thing I've learned is not to try and force it. Like a lot of times you, when you're, when you're first kind of beginning your spiritual journey, you have all these ideas of what things are going to be and, and, and you try and, and shape your relationship with Christ rather than letting him do so. And I think that was kind of one of the more difficult things to, to learn is, is not to try and direct my own spiritual life. And by not doing that, I think it, it, it allows more, more freedom in the relationship in, in, you know, in terms of, of spiritual growth and, and growing closer to God. In the beginning, it was strictly a matter of survival. The simple tasks of hauling water, fetching firewood, and picking berries kept us alive and consumed most of our time. Common prayer and the normal domestic tasks took the rest. There was little opportunity for planning and working out strategy. We knew where we were going, but we did not know how to get there. We took comfort in an aged priest's final words to us, penned just a few weeks before his passing. It is the Lord's work, and he will have to do it. Work has been integral to the monastic experience. The lives and sayings of the Desert Fathers are filled with references to the ropes, mats, and baskets woven by the hermits of the Egyptian desert. From the vineyards of the French and German Benedictines to the icon studios of the Studite monks of Constantinople and down to the cheese, jam, fruitcake and icon reproductions of present-day American monasteries, commercial enterprise has been a constant in monastic life. How, one may wonder, can all this productive activity be reconciled with the monastic ideal of a life devoted to prayer? Is this not, in fact, defeating the purpose of monastic life? A monk is a man of prayer. In leaving the world, he does not renounce his humanity, but rather seeks its purification and transfiguration. 
The book of Genesis tells us that the first man was placed in a garden to cultivate and care for it. Work was a part of his original happiness, and it remains a great good, a natural blessing. While he lives in separation from the world, the monk does not see himself as different from his fellow men. He does not feel that his life of prayer somehow exempts him from his responsibility to provide for himself. He is a man. If he wishes to eat, he must work. This is the natural order of things. To seek to live otherwise would be a rebellion against God, a denial of the Creator's wisdom. High-profile jobs are foreign to the monastic endeavor. Without fanfare, expecting no reward, the monk humbly addresses the tasks set before him, grateful for the many blessings of divine providence. The monk is called to help the poor, not by redistributing the fruit of other men's labor, but by sharing what has been gained by his own. His work must be diligent, not for his own enrichment, but for the benefit of others, be they his brother monks or the world's poor. Thus it often happens that monasteries become financially successful. His community need not, indeed should not, be destitute. To carry out its life and work, the monastery requires a certain degree of prosperity, and the Lord in his mercy provides. Work, therefore, is seldom lacking at a monastery. In a small community such as our own, it can become overwhelming. Herein lies a problem. How to balance the blessings of work with the commitment to a life of prayer. Maintaining both the work and the liturgical prayer can sometimes seem nearly impossible. Over the years, we have taken various measures to reduce our workload at the jam pot, but we remain stretched pretty thin and we burn a lot of midnight oil. We know this is a common situation for small, young communities. Like many trials of youth, it will lessen with time. We patiently wait for that day. Meanwhile, we trust that the lessons learned will strengthen us for the other labors that must lie ahead. O oh, gladsome light, everlasting splendor, son of justice, come, enlighten all who sit in darkness and the shadow of death. Come. Being an artist, you gotta look at the deep interior things. Okay. Why are you painting? What's your goal? And what's your interior goal? Why are you doing it? Why? I'm asking you. From the very beginning of our monastic life at Jacob's Falls, we have seen as our special charism and apostolic work the building up of God's kingdom through the arts. 
we firmly believe that human artistry is a divine gift given by God that we might all come to know him better. In creating beauty, we exercise and manifest an integral part of our nature. We were created in the image and likeness of God. God is the ultimate creator. Through our own creative abilities, we can express our likeness to Him, render Him thanks and praise for His many blessings, and proclaim His love for the whole world. Beauty has the power to touch the soul directly, to evoke in the heart feelings of joy, exaltation, or sadness. It can elevate the mind to spiritual matters and make the soul more receptive of things divine. Through their beauty, the works of our hands may move others closer to God. I hope that uh, monks and nuns and lay people will be able to use the monastery as a center for producing art and artworks and people will come to experience those artworks um, and however way it is used, whichever way it's, it's used for uh, promoting the monastery, promoting the artists, uh, God will reveal that as we, as we go along and, and improve and, and grow.
wisdom be attentive. The light of Christ enlightens all. Joy-giving light of the sacred glory of the immortal heavenly and blessed
so what do you want to do? You want to just do the beginning line? Yeah, let's look at that second part, the third, the third measure. See, it's got... Yeah, there's the sharp. It's chromatic, by the way.
てよ」Tell people where you're going. No.、Oh. Well, it's not so much a matter of where we're going, it's we have arrived. We're here. We're not going anywhere from here, you know, at least not in this world. We're working towards the other world, to the other side. No career advancement or anything else. We're, we're here we are. We've made it. Yeah, we have arrived. <laughs> you know, that's certainly、uh, an aspect of the monastic vow of stability. That you don't think about going anywhere else. You are where you are supposed to be, and this is where you're going to be. Now, hopefully, living the life, you're going to continue to grow in grace and spirit and, and, and intellect and everything else, but physically, you're not moving out of that particular location, and you're not striving for career advancement, say, or something like that. You don't, you don't come into a monastery. Um, with ambitions.、Right? You know, ambition is something you leave behind. Come in to take off the old man and put on the, the new. Man. That's right. Is what, is, what, is what you do. And that way, that's a whole part of not dwelling on your past, not dwelling on who you are when you come in, but who you're becoming as a monk. 
important thing is what you are now and what you are striving to become. Well, we strive to, to keep that, that charism, if you will, alive within the church, that communal living and uh, holding everything in common. The monks that are coming in the future, that the land is healthy and that it's not poisoned to produce something fast now is very important that you're always looking at the long range and, pr and producing and growing and, and, and taking care of the forest because we are foresters and all of a sudden we own a forest that's 725 acres you're a forester and you don't want to damage that for the future. Monastic stability stands as a sign of contradiction and a witness against the uprootedness of our most unstable times. It brings profound peace and freedom from anxiety to those who embrace it, and it provides a beacon of hope for those caught up in the darkness and turmoil of our constantly changing world. Over the years, we have encouraged a number of men and women to think of us as a refuge from the futility of worldly life. To those who are free to embrace that refuge, and to those who treasure our prayer and witness, it must remain a consolation and a joy that we are, and will be, still here.
Mother of God, light of my poor soul, my hope, my protection, my refuge, my comfort, and my joy, I thank you for having enabled me to be a partaker of the most pure body and the most precious blood of your Son. Enlighten the eyes of my heart, you who carry the source of immortality, O most tender and loving Mother of the merciful God, have mercy on me and grant me a repentant and contrite heart with humility of mind. Recall my thoughts from wandering into all kinds of distractions and make me worthy always, even to my last breath, to receive the most pure mysteries of Christ for the healing of my soul and body. Give me tears of repentance and thanksgiving that I may chant and praise you all the days of my life, you who are ever blessed and glorified. Amen. Amen.